everyone. Welcome to today's presentation. I'm Nigel Watts, Managing Director of Proto Software, and I've been very excited about today. Today is a culmination of thousands of requests from engineers across India and the persistence and effort of our development teams to bring the Indian codes to life. So I'm very proud to announce that with the latest build of Protostructure, the Indian codes are now available and we have provided a comprehensive implementation of the standards. Now joining me today will be product manager Mustafa Tan and he will talk in more detail about this journey that we've been on with the standards and more specifically the concrete and steel design codes as well as the loadings standards, the wind and seismic standards also. So it's going to be an exciting event today, I can't wait. Now to just run through quickly the agenda, I'm briefly going to talk a little bit about PROTA, give you some insight into what we do, and I'm then going to dive into the software. I'm going to take you straight in and you can see the Indian codes and proto structure in action. I'm then going to be joined by Mustafa who's going to talk in a bit more detail about the specific uh, implementation of the codes and give you some insight into that. And I'm then going to show you how you can take advantage of the technology where you can download and use our trials as well as um, reach out to our partners in India who are here to help you get the most out of your journey with Proto Software. Now, Proto was founded in 1985 and is a leading design and engineering technology business. We are a group of businesses focused on software development, software distribution and engineering consultancy. Our engineering and architectural business is one of the largest practices in Turkey and we have delivered projects around the world from airports to subway stations to large commercial residential developments. We understand engineering design and how this can shape and change the world. Having that insight has also helped us shape the software. We are engineers as well and we understand the challenges that you face and the proto software has evolved around meeting those challenges. We also distribute other technology, including Autodesk products, and we are the largest distributor of Autodesk in the Middle East and Eastern Europe. And we like to partner with those businesses and understand their technology and align ourselves to allow you, our users, to get the most out of uh, the latest tools in the market. Now, as a software business, we've been growing globally. We're headquartered out of Ankara in Turkey. Uh, I'm actually based in Malaysia, and uh, across uh, Southeast Asia, we currently support over a thousand businesses. We also have been growing rapidly in other parts of the world, into South America, Africa. It's a very, very exciting time to be at Prota, and obviously now we're now launching in India and again we're really excited to be able to bring the technology to our Indian users. Now to do this we've had to support a lot of uh, international codes so we've we've been on an effort over several years to write in many design codes offering a range of different language support. Uh, supplementing that are many design guides that you'll find very useful that explain a lot of the technical detail around what we do um, and we're growing to the point where we're almost supporting 100 countries now uh, through directly through our offices and locally through our dedicated distributors. Now, a little bit about our history. Proto first started developing software in the late 80s and it introduced the world's first design and detailing platform for engineers to design reinforced concrete buildings in 1992. 
We followed this up in 2005 by providing the first system for allowing engineers to assess and plan out rehabilitation of um, earthquake prone buildings. And we followed this up in 2007 by creating the first bidirectional integration with uh, Revit, paving the way for seamless communication between engineers, architects and owners. In 2014, we redeveloped the underlying technology and protostructure was born. And this brought in the latest development tools and a multi-material platform dedicated for engineers to design building structures quickly and efficiently. Our engineering teams have also been involved with some world's firsts. We delivered in 2018 the world's largest airport terminal building, the new Grand Airport in Istanbul, an extremely tight time frame. So within six months, all the detailed drawings for this entire uh, development were produced uh, on a very tight construction schedule. And this year, we're proud to support you know, well over 80 and on the way to 100 businesses around the world with our technology as Proto grows from strength to strength. Now, what's the philosophy behind Proto? How have we developed so quickly? And what's, uh, how are we helping engineers around the world? Well, really, what we've been doing is looking at how you work. Now, I'm sure you agree, as structural engineers, we look at the world and we try to interpret this. Now, traditionally, this has been done through creating very simplistic models, little analytical models with members and nodes. But increasingly, these are becoming more physical-based models. We then perform a wide range of analyses, and this can cover special specific considerations like finite element analysis, response spectra or time history, stage construction analyses, various considerations that need to go into ensuring that a building is designed to cater for the range of the envelope of forces in, uh, that need to be considered uh, for a safe economical design. We then have to design everything. We've got to design, they take those forces, those actions, and design everything from the roof down to the foundation. And we then need to document this in a form allowing for construction, uh, allowing contractors to go to site and, and build this. But increasingly, those contractors are asking for even more detailed information. They're actually even asking for constructible or fabricated information, driving it right down to the manufacturing and fabricating fabrication process. And of course we need to be able to share and coordinate and communicate with our other project team members, be it architects or owners, sharing information and collaborating on projects before they before the part, first pile is even driven into the ground. So engineers these days have to deal with a lot from modeling, analysis, design, detailing, fabrication and BIM. Now, if we look around at the market, if we look at most engineering offices, you'll generally find that there's a range of different modeling and analytical tools out there. You have your STADs, your SAPs, your ETABs, and these tend to do some design, but generally they're just doing elemental design. How about the detailed checks that go into completing a design? Things like anchorage lengths, lap lengths, bolt prying forces. There are a lot of considerations. Now often engineers will complement this process with other tools. Maybe they're using LIMCOM to help them with the detailed connection design. Perhaps they're using PROCON to help them design a retaining wall. And then once they've done this, they then have to sketch up everything and communicate this to the draftsman for drafting. And there's lots of different generic CAD platforms out there. AutoCAD, GSTAR CAD, ZWCAD, there's so many in the market. But are these actually spe specifically tailored for structural detailing? Are they created with the draft, structural draftsmen and structural engineers in mind? Then if we wish to move into fabrication, there's another tool set here, Tecla Structures, BOCAD and the like. And finally, if we'd like to share and communicate information with other parties, we're looking at Revit, ArchiCAD, a range of different BIM tools. So typically, if you look around most engineering offices, you'll find that there's a range of different solutions out there. 
to allow you to complete a project. You may be using STAD for analysis, maybe you're using Procon for component design, AutoCAD for drafting, Tecla structures and Revit and the like. So most engineering offices then have significant investments in software, whether it be the time spent learning all these different programs, all with their different interfaces and ways of, of using things, and also the expense of acquiring all these different platforms. But then there's also the expense of information not being seamlessly shared between these different stages, information being held in silos and complicating the process. So we looked at this and we thought there must be a better way. How about a system that's dedicated for structural modelling and analysis, streamlined for building design? Designing everything from the roof right down to the foundations and taking into detail all the considerations required for completing that design, whether it be designing core walls, foundations, seismic resisting frames and more. How about a dedicated CAD system allowing you to create instantly all your details automatically organized into your title blocks, but also providing you with tools to edit and complement the design with other component details. How about a dedicated fabrication system that allows you to create all your construction and shop details, sharing them with the fabricator and the contractor? And finally, how about a system that allows you to share and communicate information seamlessly with other project team members, be it the owner, the architect, or the services engineers, but allowing you to coordinate projects before they've even started construction. So a system for modeling, analysis, design, detailing, fabrication, and BIM. What if all these systems were just one system I'm very proud to present to India Protostructure. Now, central to this is Protostructure, and it allows you to model, analyze, and design. You can start the process in different ways. So if you have architectural drawings, you can bring these in and work on top of these to help develop your models quickly. Or if you have physical BIM information, you can also take advantage of that. Once we've done the design, we then use Proto Details to arrange and create all of our detailing. It's a full CAD system. You can take advantage of all the CAD functionality as well. For steel work, we use Proto Steel to design and detail all our steel work connections, and we can produce drawings right down to shop detailing. Of course, you need to document everything, and this is where Proto BIM comes into play with creating all of our calculations and all of our documentation for submission to authorities. We're also a very open platform, and you can share uh, analytical data with other systems, including OpenSeas, eTabs, and SAP. Now, how's Proto been used around the world? Proto's being used by some of the leading design businesses across the world to deliver interesting projects, be it airports, major airports around the world, be it large uh, university campus buildings, be it huge commercial developments. Proto's taken a foothold around the world, allowing engineers to deliver projects faster and more efficiently than ever before. But let's not take my word for it, let's see the software in action. So when you first load product structure, a home screen will welcome you. Off to the left here you can see that there's a resource center and this contains information to allow you to get up and running and get the most out of product structure. So whether it's what's new documentation, getting started, maybe you're interested in watching a few YouTube videos or wanting to find out technical detail and design guides, everything's available here. We also have a live news feed which will update you on happenings at Prota and you can see the latest builds that are available for you to use. These can be downloaded and seamlessly your system can be updated and you can carry on working. Now across the left here you can see that there's a tile showing the latest projects that you've been involved with. I'm going to create a new job and let's call this India Launch. 
Now down here you'll notice that there's a range of different templates that we've created here. Now these have, have been developed over a number of years to suit different markets that we operate in. So if you were doing projects outside of India, perhaps you had a, a project in Ireland to Eurocode, perhaps you were doing something in Singapore, or maybe you were doing something in America. You can grab these templates and they will load the typical design and detailing preferences used in those countries. So you can get up and running and be doing things in a local context straight away. Now I'm going to choose the Indian codes here. This is the new template that we've introduced as part of the Indian code implementation. And I can hit OK and then we're straight into the modeling environment. Now central to this you can see the modeling uh, screen. Off to the left there's a, a handy tree with a, it gives you quick access to uh, various information in the model. Um, and along the top here you can see that there's a, a series of ribbons. Now you can start the project in different ways. If you have architectural drawings you can bring these in. Uh, if you have maybe BIM information you can take advantage of bringing that information in. All the settings are centralized in here. You can click on the settings and you can see uh, different preferences here. Now you can manipulate these. So if you have uh, different preferences for perhaps the size of bars you wish to use, perhaps you'd like to uh, play with the different types of detailing preferences, everything in here is customizable. You can customize this to suit the particular job that you're working on. Now along the left, Along the top here you can see the different tabs. So I can start with modeling my elements, whether it's concrete or steel. We can then assign global loads to these before we review things and perform the analysis and the design. We can then create all of our drawings and documentation as well as collaborate and share information with other BIM platforms. Now I'm gonna create a simple model here and I'm just gonna lay things out in a plan view. And to do that, I'm going to work with some grid lines. So I'm just going to key in a basic grid line arrangement here. Uh, you, can, um, you can also import these from um, a CAD if you wish, if that's easier for you. And you can hit OK, and then you can see that the axes have been set up here. Now these axes are dynamic, and you can work with these. So if I wish to make changes, uh, perhaps I want to, instead of having a straight grid line, Maybe I want to have something that's a little bit curved. We can just come in and dynamically change this. So if I, I can set a chord length here if I wish. Maybe I've got a facade of a building and it's a little bit different. You could also work with this as well. And you can, you can use this to draw up almost anything you like. So here I'm just coming through and creating something a bit unusual. Perhaps the architect's playing with me a little bit. You can come in and create this and then set that out here. Okay. Um, now I'm going to work from left to right to start to develop things. I'm going to insert some columns. Now you can key the properties of the column in here, the size and so on can be created. You can box around to quickly put these elements in. Uh, you can uh, type in the, um, the sizes and uh, different orientations of things. I'm going to lay out some columns just along the curvature of the grid and you can see very quickly I've created those. We have libraries of different shapes here so you can choose from different uh, column uh, profiles you wish to use, or it could be steel, um, it could be built up sections, uh, cold form sections or composite. So you can just come in and here and choose from these libraries. Uh, when you do look at the seal sections, you've got different sections in here. You have the Indian libraries with things like junior beams and so on. Uh, you can choose at your fingertips. Now, um, <coughs> I'm just going to go back and, and, and work with the concrete sections at this point. So let's just uh, key in a, um, a diameter for a column. The underlying engineering properties are automatically calculated for you. You can manipulate these if you wish. You can uh, manipulate the stiffnesses and, and fixities and the like can all be controlled. So I've just laid out some columns there. Let's now put in the core wall. So again, we can just uh, feed in the properties and we can run around and establish the core wall details here. Um, I can then uh, work with some concrete beams. So let's just assume it's a 650 deep beam um, and we can we can box around to put these in okay uh, or you can actually snap between points. So you can snap to these points uh, the beam can follow the crank of the beam of the grid line there or you can snap to a column okay if on the fly if you wish to create things like curved sections you can easily come in and model and create those uh, instantly. Now for lots of sections you can box around and just put these in Okay, um, and then that will create things. Now, 
the unique thing about protostructure is that these are um, these are physical objects. We know these this wall and this beam already exist. So if I wish to create these two extra beams, it understands this and it's just provided those two beams. Okay, um, so you don't have to worry about overlapping of elements. It's the beauty of working with physical information. If you snap to a beam, it will pick up handy points, quarter point, third point, mid span. Okay, and you can just um, snap to these and then uh, create your elements. So here I'm just creating uh, some additional uh, secondary members. Uh, we can just do that by quickly snapping. Uh, if you hit F2, you can also key the distance in and then you can create that, that member. Now you can just use your cursor keys to adapt this too. So if you have some underlying architectural drawing and you're just wanting to align things accordingly, you can. Maybe these columns here, for example, I just want to push these across slightly so that they align with the, the face of the, um, the beam. And you can just use your cursor keys to do that. Now hopefully what you're starting to see is this looking a little bit like a key plan. Now at this point I'm going to come in and, and create some slabs but before I do that I just wanted to introduce you to some libraries that we use to help us quickly create different types of uh, superimposed deadloads. So I'm going to, in the, in the slabs, I can come in and choose um, to add uh, different loads to the, um, the building here and you can give these a name, you could call them bedroom and, uh, and uh, or bedroom, or you could call them bathroom. And in here I can color code these to suit what I'd like to see in the model. Okay, um, um, these are just the, the finishes that we are going to have here. And then we can assign different finishes to them. So for the bathroom, for example, I may have a cement uh, grout or a cement uh, screed that I wish to use. Okay, I can key in the thickness of this and average. And you can also come in and put in things like finishing tiles and so on. So maybe I've got some mosaic tiles sitting on top of this. I can define this and you can see that the self weight of this is automatically calculated. For the bedrooms we may have a different scenario. Uh, maybe the screed is, um, is um, not quite as thick and then on top of that we may have a, maybe we've got a um, uh, we could have, say, a parquet floor. So again, we can key in the properties of this, and the self-weight of this is automatically calculated, and these can be added to the library. We can do similar things with things like brick walls, and you can come in here and create different types of brick walls. It could be 150 uh, millimeter uh, thick, uh, lightweight wall, and you can you can key those properties in. Okay, now again you can you can color code this so it's easy for you to identify in the model, and then you can add these in here. So again, we've got libraries of finishes. Uh, you can add your own materials in here as well, and you can then just come in and and choose what they are. So maybe I've got a um, maybe the wall there is 145 thick, and I've got um, maybe 10 millimeters of plaster. That's what I want to consider. So here you can see that the, the load acting on that wall has been calculated. So these have been added to the libraries. Now how do we take advantage of those? Well at this point I'm going to come in and create the slabs. Now as part of this process we're also at this stage going to define the load combinations. And this is an automated process. In here we can come and generate the load combinations with things like pattern loading, stage construction, temperature loading, lateral cases including seismic can be added as well as wind. As well as and also soil pressure. Now, now Mustafa will explain this in more detail later. He's going to go into this in more detail. I'll just set those up, and you can see that automatically the load combination factors are created, and this is all done in accordance with the Indian code. Now I'm now going to define the slabs, and if we just key in the thickness of slab that we're expecting, uh, we can then we will then calculate the self weight of this automatically. I can then draw from that library of finishes that I developed earlier. So maybe I've got a bedroom area and I want to put in the uh, live load as well. We can then come and assign those to the model. So maybe these areas here uh, is my bedroom. Okay, I may have um, a bathroom, and and similarly maybe the loading in the bathroom slightly more. Okay, again we can just come in and, and assign those. Uh, to, the, to our model. Now you have the flexibility to be able to create whatever you like in here. This can easily be set up. So if I've got maybe a higher live loading in, in these areas, uh, maybe my, uh, maybe this other room is, is slightly different again. Uh, maybe I've got different finishes over the other side of the building. These can all be adapted to suit uh, what it is that you wish to show. Okay, so, so easily these can be uh, set up and created. Now hopefully what you're going to see here is that the yield line underlying this is being automatically created at this point. 
And if I come in here, I can see the, how the loads are being distributed from the slab to the beam. Now this is very, very efficient. So you can see that slab loading, so this is the dead load distribution, the live load distribution, and so on. Okay, now we're using yield line to drive this, and this provides us with very, very accurate loading. All, this is all about driving economy and design. You can also use finite element distribution if you wish, the choice is yours. Now my stuff for later will talk about how you maybe I want apply other types of loading in here, but um, this is a fully flexible system. So if I accept that, I hit OK, uh, you can see that that load's been assigned. Now, if you wish to uh, create other types of um, systems, maybe you've got a very unusual slab at the balcony area, you can sketch these out and you can just take advantage of tools within Proto to allow you to sketch out different types of profiles. Um, I could then uh, use that, that profile then to create the slab. So I could key in a, maybe it's a balcony slab and it's a little bit thinner. Okay, and maybe I want to drop it a, a, a bit. I can then use that to help me assign and create that slab. Okay, now the cantilever conditions and so on will be assessed by the software later as we get into the design. Now, hopefully what you're seeing here is this look, is looking like a key plan. But actually, underneath this, what we've been doing is actually creating a physical model. And if I just click on this, you can see the physical model here. So that key plan is actually physical objects that we've been working with. And you can visualize this in 3D, or you can see this in uh, 2D and 3D. So here, um, I can see both. Now I can work with this model to enhance it further. Um, now if I come into um, say a particular column, okay, and maybe I want to make some changes to this column, um, we could come in and load the polyline column editor. Maybe I've got something a little bit different in our project. And I'm just wanting to hear just to show you some of the flexibility and versatility that we have with protostructure. So if I have um, a column that's a bit uh, of an unusual shape, okay, we can come in and, and create that in here. Okay, you have the full flexibility to be able to lay that out. Um, you can then um, uh, insert links. You can also insert your bars in the corners and you can uh, come and draw in whatever type of link arrangement you might want for this unusual column. So in protostructure we have the ability to be able to create custom shapes, custom detailing, uh, you can then assign uh, additional bars in here, maybe you've got um, a few layers of bars, it's a tall building, uh, you can come in and do this and, and just uh, create these flexibility this uh, in, in the model easily and quickly. So I could accept that and then I could um, then uh, create that as a template which will then be used uh, by the system to design in detail. So it will optimise the rebar selection as part of that process. At this point let's come in and create some brick wall loading. Now to do that we can just uh, select the member and we can come in and, and, and choose to edit loads. And then we have access to various loading here so I'm going to choose wall load. And, and the, the, the block work, lightweight block work loading that we set up here is available uh, from a pull down menu. Let's just, we can select this and we can key in the, the height of the uh, floor. Now I've, I've set this up, it's 2350. Okay, uh, we, can, we can establish that. And if I click on the member here, then this is just automatically assigned to the member. And if I hit OK, then you can see that the brick wall loading has been uh, assigned to that, that beam. Now, if I want to replicate this around the building, it's very easy to do. I can copy the loads and you can choose here what you want to copy. Let's copy the brick wall loading. I can box around to choose elements that I want to copy that to, or you can select members. Uh, uh, um, uh, you can just select members from the plan. And if I right click, I can then paste those loads. So you can see that they have been automatically assigned around the perimeter of the building there. Now I can be as accurate as I like with the loading. And if I uh, come back to the um, uh, the brick wall loading. Okay, I can. We can use a function to insert walls by dragging. So if I choose this, I could uh, choose to have the wall loading running along a member to a particular point. Okay, um, um, if I do that uh, down the other member, and I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on here, I can choose exactly where I'd like that wall loading to extend to. So you can see here that that's been uh, assigned partially along uh, the wall load there. So this uh, gives me the ability to be um, as accurate as I wish with how we set up these loads. 
and obviously we want to uh, drive a design efficiency as part of this process so so you have the flexibility to be able to do that now there's other things you can do in here depending on the t nature of the model if you have uh, services in the building maybe you've got um, some electrical services or a riser running through the building that you wish to create uh, an opening for you can do that and now if you got them if you got a little bit wrong and you wanted to uh, uh, maybe the position was wrong the beauty of having a physical model is that I can just pick this up and move this around okay so you can just assign this to uh, the part of the model that you want to see it in now if I have other things going on here perhaps I've got a drop uh, we could have maybe a set down uh, for a toilet area or the like. So again, you can just work with a physical model just to create what it is that you want to see here. So you can see, hopefully for here, you can physically see that that part of the slab has been dropped. So if you have these types of things going on in the model, you can create these and you can visualize what's going on. Similarly, if I had, uh, maybe I've got an opening in the wall here. So again, we can just uh, we can just come in and create that in the model easily. It could be maybe a window or a door. Uh, that I want to create within that shear wall, uh, we could come and assign that to the model as well. So you can set this up physically to suit exactly what you'd like to see. Uh, you can assign the loads, uh, the loading's automatically been distributed, um, but physically we're creating exactly what you'd like to see on site. Now once I have this in place, I can come and insert some stories. So let's just assume that this building's at say five stories in height. We can hit OK. I can then take that floor that, that first story and we can generate information upwards so I can copy that floor and we can replicate this up the building to other levels so if I hit OK you can see that that's been uh, automatically assigned up the building here um, and you can make changes to this as well so as you go if you wish to wish to redefine things maybe I want to remove this the beam and slab at this location perhaps if I come up to this uh, top level here I may wish to um, I may wish to delete the loads. It could be the um, the wall loading that I wish to delete. Okay, I could even come in and maybe um, maybe I decide that at that level there, I don't actually want a beam slab system. Okay, I could decide that I actually want to uh, delete the beams and I want to have a flat slab. So so if I hit OK, you can see that the beams have been removed there and we have been replaced with um, a flat slab system. Now you could do other things in here. If you decided that the uh, the wall here, I wanted to replace that, and instead of having a um, a brick, uh, instead of having a shear wall here, uh, perhaps I'd like to have um, some columns, and I may want to insert these as drop head panels. So you have the flexibility to be able to introduce different structural systems within structure it's very easy to set up and create okay I'm just creating uh, the size of the drop head panel here okay maybe it's 400 in deep uh, depth and you could then just uh, just come and assign that into the model there so you can see that very quickly I've just changed that whole structural system from one of a of being a beam slab system to now we've got a flat slab system at that level okay so these kinds of things are easy to manipulate within uh, the model now let's go to the roof level and in the roof level here, and I'm just going to change the view so that you can see uh, the, 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 the entire uh, roof here. And I'm going to start working with uh, the steel elements. So I'm going to grab a column here. I can come in and choose a section from databases. So um, I can choose different profiles here. Um, maybe I want to go for a standard column. And we can choose an appropriate section. Let's use a 220 and hit OK. And then I can lay these out in the model. So I'm just I'm drawing these in 3D. You can see I'm just placing the uh, the columns as I see fit. Um, at this point, I might want to come and create a, a truss. So what we do is uh, what's unique about protostructure is that we use what we call contextual modeling. If I want to put a truss in, we understand it's a truss. And in here, I can come and choose from different libraries of trusses. I can import a CAD file and sketch out, uh, use that to uh, create my own profile. I can also uh, use nodes and members to build up any shape I like. But with most of the standard truss shape profiles we have in here, and you can come and choose from a section and just easily come in a model and create that. So I can um, I can play with, for example, the number of bays in the in the truss. Um, I could, if I wish to, uh, enter 
it modifies splice positions. I can also play with different angles and so on in here. I can also manipulate the fixities also. But if I'm happy with this, if I hit OK, then that truss gets created. And you can see I can just then simply come and copy uh, that truss across the frame here. Uh, let's look at a part of the model. Um, I'm going to create some beams. Um, let's come in and choose a, another beam. Maybe I've got a junior beam in here um, and I could choose um, a different section that I want or maybe let's have a look at a medium beam. Okay, maybe that's more appropriate. So, so we can just come and choose um, appropriate sections from here. Uh, you can select the section and then, and then that will be loaded. Now you can play with the fixities here. So if I want to pin both ends of the member, I can do so. And then I can then use that to help me assign the section. Now I don't need to worry about snapping between the points. I can, I can just uh, place that beam across those, those, those bays and it understands that these are um, that these um, are split across the columns there and then they're automatically created. So you can see quickly I've just come and defined those. If I want to use um, a, um, if I want to connect them at the um, at uh, the roof level here, I can do that as well. So you can just come and select and, and create the uh, sections here. Now you do have intelligent snaps, so if you're wanting to snap to other points, okay, you can easily come and model those if you've got irregular arrangements. Now at this point I may wish to define um, my bracing system. So again with contextual modelling you can just choose the two columns that you wish to brace and you can see that there's a preview of a bracing arrangement here. Okay, If you want to modify uh, the brace perhaps I'd like to use um, a different profile. Um, it could be um, for example a circular hollow section and again you can come and choose something in here that might be appropriate for you uh, and, then, and then that can be assigned. Now you can play with different bracing arrangements, so if you've got a V-brace or a K-brace, instantly these are the, you're at the touch of a button. So you can you can manipulate these. You can also play with the um, bracing position. So if you wanted to uh, move the position of a brace for some reason, uh, you can you can come in and edit those in here as well. Okay, so so you have you have the choice um, about uh, of what you want to do here. You can you can manipulate things to suit if you wish to move things around. So you can see there I, I typed in a, a different distance and I moved that. So if I hit OK, that will then get created. I can I can choose to brace the other bay as well. Okay, and I'm going to come in and, and, and brace the uh, truss here also. So again, you can key in uh, the number of um, braces that you have here. Okay, and then then they can be set up in here. Okay, so let me just run through that. So, so um, you can see I've got I've got top and bottom bracing to the cord there. If I didn't want to have the bracing in the bottom, for example, I could just admit that we can just turn that, uh, make that zero, and you can see a little preview here of the bracing, and then okay. So at the touch of a button, all this bracing can be instantly created. Similarly, if I wanted to set out my purlins, it's just a case, a simple case of just choosing between two trusses. Okay, it will propose an arrangement for the purlins here. Uh, the arrangements are fully uh, flexible, so you can choose um, um, how you want these um, uh, placed. So um, it could be by a spacing, predefined spacing, or you want them at the at the truss uh, uh, joints. Okay, it's up to you. Again, you can play with uh, appropriate profiles here, so you can choose uh, a suitable section that you may wish to use. Let's use a um, Let's use a channel, maybe it's a 150. Okay, you can just come in and, and select that, and then that, that can then be assigned to the model, and then and then that's done. Okay, so that's uh, instantly been created there. You notice also that the sag rods were created as, at the same time. Okay, uh, if you want more efficient design, then we can take advantage of those. Uh, I'm now going to move in and create the girt. So let's just choose. Um, um, in bay here and again I'm going to manipulate the profile I'm just going to choose something that I might want to use um, uh, let's let's go with the same uh, size as we, we used earlier okay and then um, and then I can play with the spacing of these so let's let's maybe make it 650 and you can preview things here make sure that you're happy with the arrangements if you are then then that gets created and you can see that the um, the uh, the girts along that frame have been have been set up now um, at this point I just wanted to um, point out the what's very important with what we do in protostructure and what's unique is that we're actually creating a physical model here. So you can see that the set out of the elements is as if you were going to build this. So you can see that the purlins there are sitting on top of the truss. The, the, um, 
the girts there are on the, on the face of the column. This setout is really important because this will, will drive the detailing. And the same thing can be said of the, of the concrete frame. Uh, as I was modelling earlier, you can see that the columns and the beams and everything that you can see in here is, is being shown um, as if you were going to build it. So that's very important and that will help drive uh, the detailing process. Now there are other things you can do in here if you wish to add um, frame members. These are This is free member modeling so if you want to create um, a member that's um, uh, a, a bit different okay um, um, you can use this just to help you with that so if you had to provide an additional support to say this end here you could you could come in and model that and you have full control over the fixities you could uh, have pin it you could have torsional releases axial releases and so on okay so you have full control over this uh, as an engineer and you can just play with this to suit okay and you can also remove it as well if you don't want to have it there now um, I'm at this point going to um, um, use another 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 tool that we have to help with loading and this is this um, what we call uh, cladding load. So if I select cladding, okay, and I choose uh, the top of the roof there, it will then set up some cladding. Okay, now this is similarly, um, uh, I can do the same thing with the um, the end base here. If I want to set up some uh, cladding load at each of those walls, I could I could put cladding along the front there as well if I want, but I'll just, just to give you some idea. So you can just come and select these. Now once you've got these in, the beauty of this is that I can then come and select the cladding and uh, maybe in here, I just if I select that, I want to then um, come in um, and edit, edit the loads. And in here, I could easily I can use that to help me define uh, things like pressure loads. So maybe I want to assign a cladding loading uh, to that, um, and I could just box around and, and put that quickly in. But perhaps I'd like to assign some live loading to the roof. And uh, and again, I can just easily come in and do this. And you can set up other loading, wind loading, and so on. Can be a uh, pressure loads can be can be set up in here. So if I just hit OK, then that's done. OK, and then, and then we've we've quickly come and assigned and set up those loads. So at this point, I've I've com sort of completed the basic model, and um, and now before I get into the analysis and design, I might just want to quickly come and check things. So we have this great visual interrogation manager in here that you can use, and uh, if I wanted to know what live loading I'd assign to the model, uh, you can see it's all color coded here, so you can quickly come and check uh, what kind of uh, live loads you've had, uh, superimposed dead loads. So this is where I set up those. Uh, loadings for the bedroom and bathroom finishes uh, and the like then you can again you can visualize that if you wanted to check material grades or maybe you want to see what column sections have I got again again you can just come and review this and make sure that you're happy with uh, with what's been assigned to the model a great tool for checking uh, maybe a junior engineers work and making sure that they uh, they've, they've set things up um, appropriately now I'm going to move into the loading and then the analysis um, I'm just going to explain this briefly because Mustafa will uh, join us shortly and he'll go into a lot more detail about the implementation of the Indian codes. But uh, briefly, I'm going to set up and assign uh, some seismic loading to this model. Uh, you can come into the model here and you can choose uh, for the Indian codes from various cities that you might want to uh, assign it to, maybe in Pune for example, uh, and it will automatically set the seismic zone. You can uh, manually drive this. Okay, um, other parameters can be established, structural systems and so on, which Mustafa will provide more insight to. I'm going to choose the number of modes, so you can, you can um, key in the number of modes here, um, and there will be other checks that will be performed during the analysis. Now, with wind loading, similarly with wind loading, you can assign uh, your basic wind speed, so you can key in a basic wind speed here. Uh, you can feed in various parameters, um, and you can just follow and step through the code here, uh, assigning uh, things accordingly to uh, the building. Okay. Now we will then automatically calculate the um, the width, the length, the pressures, and the and assign the load automatically to the structure. Now at this point we're done, and I now want to move into uh, performing the analysis. So um, so at this point I'm going to um, set up the analytical model. Okay. We've already established the seismic parameters, wind loading, and load combinations. Um, if I want to edit the materials and play with the grades of concrete or steel, I can do so in here. So this is all, all at your fingertips. You can manipulate this to suit your project. If you want to admit certain bar sizes, you can. It's all very customizable to suit the nature of, uh, of your particular project. 
Now, um, I'm going to set this model up. I'm going to I've, I've, I'm going to use rigid zones. Now, this allows me to build in a bit of economy where we build rigid arms out to the face of the columns. You can model a uh, centre line if you wish. It's entirely uh, your choice. I'm also going to be using um, shell elements. I've set the default here as shell elements. You can play with the size of those shells. Um, for models also, I'm going to assume that uh, this is a flat slab, so I'm meshing this floor level, um, and you can play with the meshing parameters here as well. Okay, now once you've done this, you can then just move straight into the analysis. And I'm just going to run this uh, straight away. Um, and I'm going to simultaneously do the design of the structure. Now what we're doing now is we are taking that physical model that we've created, and we're automatically creating the underlying analytical model. And we're then automatically running the analysis, and we're all the different load permutations, combinations are all being run. Um, and during this process, we're also doing a series of different checks. So we were checking for things like interstory drift or excessive deflections. We are checking that the weight of the, um, the structure that we've added up, we add up separately manually is um, uh, aligns with the reactions that we achieve in the model. So there's a whole different series of underlying checks that we're doing to ensure that the uh, code base checks are satisfied and that the analysis is um, satisfactory. We then move in and do the design. So you can see it's running through and designing uh, all the columns and walls at this point. It's optimizing the reinforcement as it goes. So it's working out the most efficient design. Uh, for uh, for these elements, it's placing all the rebar. It's working out um, uh, all the all the detailed checks in accordance with the code are uh, being performed at this point. Now, if you find later in a project that you do have changes, the brilliant thing with protostructure is that there's change management. So you can see there's some check steel options there. You can set this up so that you are just checking an existing model that you already have designed. So maybe there's some changes and um, somebody adds in some additional loading to the structure. Uh, then, then you can just check the existing structure against those changes and it will highlight to you any elements that may need to be redesigned. Okay, so all this process is being managed by the software. Now at this point I'm going to um, draw Mustafa in. Mustafa is going to talk in more detail about this fantastic implementation that we've done to the Indian codes. So everyone, I'd just like to break from my presentation to introduce you to Mustafa Tumatan, our product manager. Mustafa has been extremely busy over the last six months um, implementing the Indian codes. I guess uh, lots of coffee has been consumed during that time, Mustafa. It's quite exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Hi, Nigel. Uh, thanks. Um, it has been a very busy six months for us, full of uh, relentless hard work, actually. And finally, we have the Indian standards on board with protostructure, starting from concrete design to steel design, wind loading, seismic loading, and so on. Um, I'm in fact quite excited that finally we are able to share our technology with structural engineering community uh, in India. Well, it's great to hear that, and I'm sure they'd love to hear what you would like to cover uh, in the detail. Thank you all again. I'm Mustafa Tan and I have been with the Proto team for almost 20 years. I'm acting as the product manager and software architect for Proto Structure. I'm really excited to talk about the Indian standards support and some of the advanced tools in Proto Structure. Proto Structure is an all in one modeling, analysis, design, and detailing software. So, when it comes to supporting a code, there are several aspects to cover. Protostructure provides the engineers with a wide range of powerful automations and tools, including automated loading, seismic loads and checks, RC member design, ductile design and detailing, and steel design. We have integrated Indian standards into these tools. So, Let's talk about these in detail. We support a wide range of international concrete design, steel design, composite design, wind and seismic codes. In fact, these codes and other code related settings are automatically selected when you start your project using the template 
specifically created for India. In Protoss structure, load combinations are generated automatically using an interactive wizard. You can choose options for vertical and lateral load cases, such as pattern loading, construction stage, P-delta effects, RSA or equivalent static seismic analysis, vertical earthquake, use of crack sections, and more. The necessary load cases and combinations are automatically created, complying with the Indian standards and your preferences. You can further edit the combination factors to suit your specific design requirements. Wind loads are calculated according to IS 875 Indian wind loading code. Launch the wind load generator and specify the necessary parameters such as basing wind speeds, minimum wind pressure, directionality factor, structure type and terrain category. The wind loads will then be calculated and assigned to story levels automatically. Besides, you can import wind loads from an Excel spreadsheet. One of the revolutionary features in Protoss structure is our flexible loading system. All the standard loads are automatically calculated and transferred on the members. For your buildings in India, you may still need to apply additional loads in any orientation and load case. For example, you can apply horizontal loads on the beams along the lateral axis. In addition to this, point and uniform loads can be manually applied on truss joints and truss members. You can visualize the loads on the structure in 3D. I'm sure you will find a lot of flexibility and interactivity in our powerful load editor. After you create your load cases and combinations according to Indian standards, you can continue with modeling. Dead loads, live loads and additional dead loads will be automatically distributed on members as you progress with your model. Thanks to Protoss Structure's flexible loading framework, you can create more than one gravity and live load case and assign loads to them for your most complicated projects in India. In addition to this, you can specify if these cases will contribute to seismic masses or not. Another essential type of loading is the static and dynamic load of soils on basement walls and part of buildings that act as a soil retaining structure. Protoss structure allows you to specify your soil profile, water table and surcharge loads. Then, static and dynamic soil loads will be automatically calculated and assigned to shear walls and basement walls. You can do further editing on the calculated loads and even create a detailed report. Protostructure has a comprehensive user interface for calculating the acceleration spectra using the parameters outlined in IS 1893. Select a town in India and related seismic zone and seismic zone factor will be fetched automatically. We provide you with the helper tables taken from the code with relevant references so you are not lost in the code. You can select different structural systems in each orthogonal direction to make use of different behavior factors and of course different design spectra. IS 1893 requires different ascending portion for the spectral curve so you will see that the curve adjusts to that as well. There are detailed analysis settings such as additional eccentricity, number of modes, user-defined periods and so on. Protoss structure will also perform plan and elevation irregularity checks automatically and report them after the analysis. RSA to EQS scaling coefficients, mode superposition method are all customizable. For important projects in India, you will need site-specific spectra. If you have one for the building site, you can introduce it to the Protoss structure as well. Of course, you can always further customize the parameters on this dialog. When you are done, just click OK and proceed with the analysis. After setting the seismic parameters, maybe the most important step is to set the model options that will be used in analytical model creation and building analysis. The model options also play an important role in seismic checks as well. 
These options are specifically tailored considering the requirements of IS 1893 and other international seismic codes. For example, the use of crack section properties in seismic load cases is a crucial step. The effective stiffness factors are compliant with IS 1893. On top of that, you can use different stiffness factors for vertical load combinations and seismic load combinations. Proper modeling of shear walls and core walls are vital. Protostructure allows you to select between mid pier and shell models for rectangular walls. Because of their torsional behavior, core walls are always modeled with shell members. You have full control over mesh size. The finite element mesh that's compatible with the connecting members is created automatically. Slab and diaphragm modeling is also pivotal. Protostructure will automatically understand the existence of multiple rigid diaphragms and free nodes by examining the slab connectivity. You can force protostructure to use a single rigid diaphragm at each story or no rigid diaphragm at all. If you need to consider diaphragm discontinuities, you can mesh the slabs and use a flexible diaphragm approach, especially in transition floors and floors with large openings. You can use different assumptions for different floor levels. Here you have full control over slab in plane and out of plane stiffness modifiers and inclusion of column outlines in the finite element mesh. By the way, vertical loads can be automatically decomposed during modeling or from the mesh during the analysis. The choice is yours. The real power of protostructure resides in creating the analysis model automatically from the physical model. State-of-the-art finite elements and formulations are used. The physical model is segmented and chopped considering the connectivities and the fully connected and compatible finite element mesh is created for you. All you have to do is to deal with the physical structural beam model. For example, here you see how two basement floors are meshed together with the first story. Basement and core walls are modeled with finite element shell members connected at common nodes. The first thing to look at is the vibration modes of the structure to understand any inherent structural system weaknesses. For this particular structure, the first mode is a torsional mode, probably because of the asymmetrical position of the core walls. The second mode seems to be a coupled mode in X and Y directions, so it may be a good idea to improve the structural system. We use the flexible diaphragm for the basement floors and the first floor. The rigid diaphragms can be visualized after the fourth story. You can have a look at the member diagrams, including beams, columns and slabs. Core wall results are also compiled into a diagram. Automated FE contours can be drawn for in-plane and out-of-plane effects. You can also create user-defined contours. So, protostructure allows you to dig deeper in the analytical model details. Seismic analysis is not complete unless you perform irregularity checks and other seismic checks. The post-analysis report includes all the important checks related to IS 1893 with code references. For example, a drift-based soft story check is done, vertical mass distribution is checked, torsional irregularity is checked, and analysis is automatically repeated with additional eccentricities. Applicability of equivalent static method is also checked. If you have a building with basement, the basement validation is done comparing the upper structure period to hull structure. Interstory drift checks are done and the prominence of second order effects is evaluated. Other important checks such as diaphragm integrity and wall slab interaction are done. A two-stage analysis is performed for buildings with basements which allow you to use different mass and stiffness matrices for upper and lower structure. Protostructure will design the beam reinforcement under the envelope actions of all combinations, including the seismic loads. For the ductile design and detailing of beams, minimum reinforcement ratios and constructive rules of seismic cause are applied. 
Confinement zone lengths are automatically determined and links are designed in span and support regions using capacity shear forces. Secondary beam, primary beam connections in reinforced concrete structures require special attention. Usually, hanger links are required in the vicinity of the secondary connection. Hanger links are also required in the primary beam where a transfer column sits. This is prominent especially for vertical earthquake effects. Protostructure will now detect such situations and provide hanger links automatically. Similar to beams, protostructure will design the column and shear wall reinforcement for all combinations including the seismic loads. For the ductile design and detailing of columns and shear walls, minimum reinforcement ratios and constructive rules are applied, confinement zone lengths are automatically determined and links are designed in span and support using capacity shear forces. End zones are automatically calculated by a percentage of length. Seismic moment envelopes are used in shear wall design. And for columns, links inside the column section are automatically laid out considering the confinement requirements. For example, user can choose to use a single link only. In this case, the insufficient confinement will be satisfied by automatic introduction of cross ties. If the user prefers a double link layout, then the confinement will be satisfied with double links if applicable. Otherwise, cross ties will be used in addition to double links. For an effective column detailing, protostructure offers comprehensive options to cover a wide range of constructability and code scenarios, such as optional lap splices in column mid height, bob anchorage options such as anchoring into the beam or U-bobs, lap splices and extensions in sloping and narrowing columns, and providing links in joints. Protostructure supports different shear wall horizontal web bar layout options for ductile detailing. The conventional practice is to wrap the horizontal web bar outside the end zone longitudinal bars, which is the first option. Second and third options provide better confinement by putting web bars completely in the core or crank them into the end zones. These kinds of detailing options are suggested by some of the seismic codes. For the walls with openings, peripheral bundle bars are automatically detailed around the opening. Designing end zones or boundary elements in shear walls is a challenging task and different codes suggest different approaches. In protostructure, you can automatically lay out end zones by using a percentage of related wall lag. End zones of the core walls with known shapes such as E, C, L, T or H can be laid out automatically using the polyline column editor. The percentage of end zones concerning the wall lag can be specified by the user. For random shapes, full automation is not always possible, but we have developed tools to make it as easy as possible for you to insert the end zone rebars. Protostructure can perform strong column checks of reinforced concretes and steel special moment resisting frames. In addition to new code coverage, the strong column weak beam and joint shear check reports are written from scratch to include more visual components with intelligent notifications. Strong column, weak beam and joint shear checks can now be reviewed for a single column and beam while designing their reinforcement. In this way, you can fine-tune the design while keeping an eye on the global seismic checks. The status of these checks can also be reviewed using the new visual interrogation options. In protostructure, we allow our users to insert steel columns, frames, trusses, purlins, girts, braces, domes and space trusses with the help of parametric macros. The physical and analytical offsets in the model are tailored for constructability. So, when you communicate your model down to protosteel for connection design and detail drawings, you'll need only minor manual adjustments. The 3D fabrication model with the internal forces 
will be readily available as soon as you finished analysis. Before sending the steel model to fabrication and connection design, you have to design the members in protostructure. We follow IS 800 provisions for the design of steel members. Design is divided into logical member groups. You can batch design the members or dive into the details of the calculations one by one. A station-based steel design is used and most critical station and combination is reported. The summary report already gives you the basic understanding regarding the design. A step-by-step -step detailed report is also available with code references if you want to spot check and verify. For more technical insights on Indian code implementation, advanced topics in protostructure and training, please visit our online help center or website's library section and our YouTube channel. You'll find tons of information to get you up and running in minutes with protostructure. And well, this ends my presentation today. Thank you so much for taking the time to participate. Back to you, Nigel. Okay, Mustafa, thanks very much for that. It's great to see all that hard effort being realized with the new Indian code release. It's really exciting. Um, yes, Nigel, um, it's been great putting this together for our Indian users. And we are really looking forward to them taking full advantage of the technology in the years to come. Okay, that's great, Mustafa. Thanks very much, and we'll catch you again very soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, welcome back to the model that we've been working on. Um, Post-analysis, uh, if anything didn't satisfy uh, the code during uh, the analytical process, they'll be highlighted to you. Uh, and then you can go and interrogate those issues. Um, we've done the, um, uh, the analysis now, and post-analysis I might like to have a look at the, um, the analytical results. So we can display the analytical model here. Um, it, it will just load, and you can see uh, the analytical um, uh, wireframe together with the meshing has been automatically uh, created. We, um, as Mustafa mentioned, there's smart meshing, so nodal, nodes within the walls and the slabs will automatically match uh, ensuring continuity of, of stresses in the, in the FE meshing um, and you can um, at this point come in and have a look at the um, at the results so if you wish to uh, look in particular at certain load cases or combinations you can just choose those from the the tree on the right here you can look at various diagrams so if I'm interested in looking at the axial load uh, you can see how that's changing as you as you venture down this column here if you'd like to see other effects perhaps you're interested in looking at the shear uh, force and the um, and the members you can see the shear, shear loading here if you wish to look at uh, bending in the in the beams, you can see those here, and you'll notice here that we've got uh, uh, rigid arms in place. So we're actually taking the moments at the face and not the centre line. And, and as I said earlier, that's a engineering choice there, but this helps with uh, driving some economy in the in the in the design. If you want to uh, find out more about in detail about the results, you can click on a member and you can interrogate this in more detail. You can look at individual load cases here as well as every single load combination that we've created here. And you can envelope these and look at the envelope for, uh, that's going to be used for the design. Um, if I was interested in knowing, for example, what the, uh, the dead load displacement is um, in... Uh, in service, um, I, I can see this value here. So you can interrogate these results. If I wanted to know if there was any torsion in the member, um, if that was um, if that was significant or not, I could I could review those results. Uh, and you can look at other other results in the members here to see if any of those effects are, uh, are need to be considered. So so um, so we will create uh, the, all the analytical uh, results here. You can review them. Um, you can easily interrogate the model to have a look at things in more detail. You may be interested in looking at other things in the model. Perhaps I want to see uh, how the structure is behaving under under seismic um, loading, for example. Okay, so you can see you can see the model there deforming. You could be looking at it in the y direction. Perhaps you also want to look at it in the 
in the X orientation. So again, all of these things you can you can interrogate in the model. Perhaps you're also interested to see the wind behaviour, and again, you can come and you can come and interrogate that and make sure that you're happy. Uh, if you want to look at other things, you may be interested in the dynamics of the building. I want to see what the period is in the um, fundamental period in the Y direction, or similarly maybe in the X direction. So you can look at the modal behaviour here, and you can get a good feel for how the uh, structure is behaving under under those um, those scenarios. Um, you could also, uh, you may be also interested to look at some of the contours and uh, perhaps you're interested in looking at a particular load case. Let me just turn off the, uh, um, the displacements there for a second. Um, you may be interested in looking at, um, it's not that animation, let's, let's have a look at the um, contours and uh, you, can, you can choose which contours you want to look at. Um, you may be in particular interested to see um, maybe the shear walls and you're interested to see uh, stress contours in the walls. So, so you can, uh, you can um, uh, choose to highlight those um, and it might be, um, might be that you're interested in axial stresses. Okay, so again, you can just come in here and interrogate the model and have a look at the behaviour and make sure that you're happy with things. Okay, so once you're, once you're happy with this, once you're happy with the results, um, we can then um, get back into having a look at the, um, at the uh, design. Now, um, before I uh, get into um, looking at the detailed element design, I'm just going to, at this point, pop down to the, uh, the foundation level, and you can do that just by accessing Story Zero. And if I just box around here, um, I could select those uh, perimeter columns. And if I right click, I have the option at this point to look at some foundations. So I could insert maybe pad footing or pile cap. You could also consider uh, combined uh, pile caps or footings. So I'm, I'm going to, let's just look at some pile caps for example. So I can just grab this, uh, we can, uh, I'll open up the pile, pile cap dialog and then I can ask it then uh, to design uh, all these foundations. So it's iterating here to, to design. Um, I could come in and see, you can see that one's um, uh, not quite not quite past uh, this iteration so I can come in and uh, we can look at that in more detail so um, uh, so I can look at the design of that selected you can see here that this is uh, failing it's just marginal in terms of uh, share capacity so I may want to come in and, um, and and this is the beauty of the system you can come in here manually edit the um, bars arrangements to, if you wish to to get things to satisfy the code so that's net designs now passed but in the pile cap design here you can see we're checking a number of different things you can feed in parameters like the grades of steel and concrete uh, you can have um, a different uh, Different parameter, different parameters will be checked for things like punching shear and shear, um, uh, the nature of the way it's performing design. Uh, we will design based on the envelope of column load, so it could also be checking for every single uh, combination. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Uh, we will also look at the axial loads uh, in every single pile to make sure that they uh, meet, um, uh, they are less than uh, allowed. Okay, and all these parameters are flexible; they can all be. Uh, manipulated um, or, or set up in accordance with uh, the design requirements. Um, I, if I also wanted to create a report of this, you can also see the detailed checks that are being performed, okay, as well as the, uh, any local cloud calls referencing. So all, all this information is available at your at your fingertips, okay. So um, so if I'm happy with that, if I hit OK, you can see that the pile caps are then uh, then set up. Um, you can uh, also, uh, if you wanted to go into a particular pile cap in more detail again uh, and look at other aspects of it. So say um, I found that on site maybe my pile's moving around. Okay, I could in fact enter the eccentricity of that so you can see that this pile's uh, moved. Okay, and we will instantly check this to see whether that satisfies the code. So not only are we designing the pile caps, you can also uh, take into account con construction considerations like um, as, -built, as built locations of piles and check to see whether they're still uh, satisfying the design. Now, if I wanted to look at other other foundations in here, uh, maybe I'd like to um, have some uh, pad footings, okay? And so again, I can come in and design uh, the pad, pad bases here. We can insert our um, allowable uh, bearing pressures, and it will design these. And again, you can get reports out, but you can see that the the foundations um, those foundations have been assigned. Now, you can model and create other 
types of foundations in here if you wish. Uh, if I had um, a different type of um, foundation, maybe I'm using a raft, uh, we, can, we can easily come and define rafts in here. You can uh, key in a thickness for the raft, okay, and, and assign that at the base there. If you found, though, that you had done analysis and maybe the soil bearing pressures uh, are not adequate, uh, you could then uh, make, make changes to this. So I could insert a pile, so maybe you have a situation where you want to use a piled raft. So again, all of this can be defined and, um, and um, you can put in the allowable capacities and so on and you can um, generate a arrangement of, of piles there beneath the, beneath the raft. Now these are, are fully flexible. If you wish to make changes at any point, you can. So if I decided that I didn't want piles in a certain locality, I can come and edit those out. I can move them around uh, uh, to suit the underlying uh, foundation system. So very quickly here, we've, we've created um, 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 a complete model, uh, including the foundation system. Um, I may just want to just touch on the design briefly. Uh, if earlier you saw Mustafa was talking about uh, the design and, uh, and, th and that's been done and it satisfied the code here. You can uh, come in and select any element you wish, so column, and look at it in more detail. So you can see uh, from, from the checks which, which uh, clause is governing. So this is a seismic case that's actually governing the design of this column. Uh, you can look at uh, interactive diagram. We will iterate to find the local uh, neutral axis and work out capacities based off this. You can also see uh, the interaction diagrams with all the various load combinations that are being checked. Um, we also can check for joint shear as well as strong column weak beam checks. So if you do uh, have to satisfy these checks, uh, we will instantly do these checks for you and you can see whether they uh, have passed the code uh, requirements. Similarly for strong column weak beam checks, again we will, we will check these uh, joints and if you found that uh, they weren't satisfying the code maybe you needed to uh, increase the steel within the column or, or uh, alternatively uh, change the arrangement of bars and the beams you could you could easily come in and do this in here okay um, now um, similarly for the beams if I come out and look at the uh, concrete beams for example and they're all listed here as well and again you can just click on a, a beam that you may be interested in exploring in more detail as Mustafa mentioned, this is interactive. You can make changes to this, uh, and the, all of this is live. So if I decided to maybe reduce the bars for this point, you can see that these no longer satisfy the code. So at every point, we're doing code-based checks to satisfy that things are correct, um, and, and we are optimizing this to suit uh, the arrangements of bars. And you can, you can look at things uh, like the envelope diagrams for the design in here. You can even, at this point, get a little sneak peek about what the actual detailing may look like. So here you can see I've just uh, given you a sneak peek of that beam and how that might look. Now, um, now you can also arrange grouping here. So if you wish to group members, uh, similar axes, for example, you can just choose to group. You can group um, all axes in the model, and they can be grouped by floor, or, or the entire model, or, or you can selectively choose what you want to group. So I've grouped these now. So this helps you just rationalize the design. So you're not uh, creating hundreds of um, independent uh, beam details. It will ha uh, help you intelligently group those members uh, into, into appropriate groups. Um, if you wish to remove members from groups, you can do so. You have a lot of control here. OK, so, so um, if I come up to the roof and I'd like to uh, look in more detail at the steel design, okay, I can come in and have a look at this as well. So you can come and interrogate the steel design here. Uh, you can see whether that's uh, that satisfied the code. Okay, uh, you can also look in uh, detail at the checks. So if I wanted to look at, for example, the top cord uh, checks, uh, you can see uh, in detail here, and you can expand these checks out so you can see in more detail exactly what's being checked. And, and making uh, to satisfy yourself that this is um, this is uh, uh, in, in accordance with the code. Now, now you can also look at diagrams here. So if you want to see the envelope of forces acting on here, or individual load cases or combinations, all of this is available at your fingertips. Now, once I've, I'm happy with this and I'm satisfied, I may at this point wish to uh, come and document the design. Okay, and to do that. I'm going to click select drawings and reports, and I'm going to load proto details. And our proto details will um, will 
uh, will load and um, and we can then move in to start to document our design okay and if you just give it a few seconds you'll see this launch and so we're now in proto details and um, you'll notice at the top here um, you can have the option to auto generate details uh, detail drawing manager if I just click on this option okay I can then uh, you can then choose uh, the level the type of details you want to see within the sheet I can choose to insert these to a sheet and here is where I would choose my title block so you can choose uh, your title block here you can um, play with the way in which you may want uh, drawings named so you can uh, set up the naming conventions here you might want to call them key plans KP1 for example uh, you can you can establish this you can also play with the uh, scale of the details you can even play with how you want beams truncated for example from the sheet border so all of this control you have and, and at this point then I'm just going to ask it to come and create uh, the details and this is where the magic within protostructure happens okay the protostructure suite within proto details it's now going to take all that design from protostructure uh, and then it's going to um, help start help publish and create information from it so just within a few seconds you can see it started to produce uh, drawing information okay and if you just give it a second we're done and if I come out you can see that just within a few clicks here we've created all the details for that model here okay now I can zoom in here and have a look at this in more detail so here we can see our foundation drawings okay uh, and here you can see the key plans now this is a complete CAD system so you have full control over the layers and line types this can look exactly how you want it to uh, appear and you can see intelligently it's drafted everything up there now um, these will be laid out into your title block so you can see the key plans here and they'll be labeled and referenced according uh, to your preferences there's other types of drawings available in here you can have set out against grid so here you can see columns being set out against a grid there um, and you can um, arrange those accordingly you can also see the elevation of the walls here so you can see uh, the elevation with containment zones you can also see the detailing of the openings around the walls here uh, you can also if you come down here you can see the column detailing uh, you'll also notice that the ductile detailing where required will be assigned okay so in the columns so so all of these will be uh, can be detailed out these can be shown in elevation uh, if you do um, if you uh, wish you can also uh, show things in um, in a schedule okay we will automatically group the columns so you can see uh, 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 grouped columns are automatically arranged you can also look at the wall details there as well now if you come further down you'll notice that the beams are now provided and you can see that the beams uh, are all detailed out uh, here you can see the, some of the ductile detailing at play uh, and how these have been been drawn out um, you'll also notice that we've grouped the members so 1b1 uh, these other beams are similar 1b2 1, 2b uh, 3b 2b 2b1 3b2 at different floor levels okay and these have been drawn out and um, and you'll notice that the 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 details are all arranged uh, automatically into your sheet now if a detail is um, a little bit too long uh, the software will automatically truncate this and you can see that it's truncated that detail and it's a repeated part of that detail uh, with the, the referencing and it will just carry on to complete the detail uh, within the sheet so we're trying to optimize and organize everything in the sheets accordingly um, you can also have schedules as well okay and similarly um, maybe you don't want to provide the full details at this point you just want to provide a basic schedule as part of maybe tendering uh, you can you can give this level of detail if that's what you wish to provide now if I just come and have a look at the sheets in more detail and if I if I come down and have a look at these bars here you can see there's uh, three H16s it's positional mark nine now if I come over to uh, the schedule here you'll notice that for position mark 9 there's 16s there's actually six of those all together it's 4.75 meters all, all together 28.5 meters uh, are combined and you can see here that we've actually uh, created the bar bending schedule so uh, for for the 16s uh, we actually have um, all together about um, 1241 uh, meters of um, length of cut bar and and it's 1.961 tons of steel now for all the details in here all the laps 
all the all the links, everything, you can see that there's 5.83 tonnes of steel. Okay, so this, uh, if you're considering different structural schemes, you're wanting to work out what the most efficient design is, this is fantastic. All this data, all this information is available at your fingertips. Now this is a detail, and I can uh, select this detail. I know everything about this bar. Uh, uh, we know its, um, its cover, how many bars there are, uh, lap lengths and so on are indicated. I can make changes to this. So say I wanted to edit this and maybe I wanted to uh, have a, a 20 there instead of a 16. I can come in and make that change in here. You can see that that bar has been updated. But simultaneously we are also calculating the new tonnages. So I'm now at 5.86 tonnes of steel. Okay, I've added an extra 30 odd kilograms because of that change. So this is dynamic. Okay, you can make changes in here and, um, and instantly the uh, revision to the quantities will be computed for you. Uh, if you come down here, you can also see the foundation details. Uh, you can see um, they're all scheduled out here. Okay, and you can look at those in detail as well. Now you are in CAD, so if you did want to make changes in here, you can. Uh, this is a complete CAD system, it's in DWG format. If I want to pick up things and move them around and reposition them, I can. There's also some unique tools in here that can help you with uh, drafting. So if I decided, uh, for example, that maybe I want to crop a beam and I want to uh, maybe cut this section of the beam and move it down to another part of the drawing, I can do so. You know, so all of this is, is editable and you can make changes in here accordingly. So you can see there I've just brought that down. Um, it's it's um, understood that that's come down. It's repeated the label. Okay, so this type of uh, tools are available at your fingertips and, it, and it's smart, intelligent drafting to suit uh, how you may be wanting to uh, draw up things structurally. Okay. Now, um, I can create new sheets and within Proto Details, we also have other little component designs that you can take advantage of. So if you uh, wanted to quickly maybe design some stairs, for example, okay, we've got libraries of, of different types of stairs in here. You can key in uh, basic parameters. Uh, you can design these. And then, uh, and then um, we can generate design reports from the stairs, so you can see uh, detailed calculations here that have been prepared uh, that, to facilitate the design. But at the same time, we are also creating the detailed drawing. So I can just click and create that drawing of those stair arrangements, and that will be drafted up for me immediately. Uh, the, the designs library is very comprehensive. There are other design uh, calculations in here that you could explore. Perhaps you want to design a core bell and you want to uh, feed in different parameters here. You can design these and then you can you can then um, provide the, the detail. And I, I would encourage you to explore the library here. There's a range of different options in here. Pile design. Uh, you can design foundations independently of the main system. Uh, swimming pools, facades, scaffolding, retrofit walls, uh, even cantilever retaining walls are in here. Um, you also have access to uh, the details in the library here um, and you can come in here and draw up things. So if I decided, for example, that I wanted to draw up um, a particular detail from, from the um, project, maybe I want to draw up an elevation of the, um, the, core, the shear wall, okay, I can just come and select this okay, and then I can draw it up. And you can see, you may recall that I had um, a shear wall down below with openings in it and then that mer merged into a column above and you can see that we've tried to make the detailing work as those two, two morph together. Okay, if you want to uh, detail other things, maybe I'd like to um, just uh, draw up another, another beam detail here, I can. And as I mentioned earlier, you also have full CAD capabilities. So this is DWG format. I can happily draft in here and you can add other details to complement things. So if I wanted to add uh, some extra rebar into a little detail that I've created, I can do so. I can play with the, the, the cover, the bars, the spacing, and then I can, I can place that within the detail. So I might want to put this uh, bar arrangement into a panel here. Okay, um, I've, it, it understands how many bars are in this. Uh, this is fully editable, so if I wanted to uh, make changes to this, move things around, I can do this in here. Um, and maybe this is a little variation that you have on the job, and, and the client wants to understand what the implications might be with cost. So I could select all these details, maybe these are some changes that have occurred, okay, and instantly we can ask the uh, product details to provide us with the quantities.
So you can see here that we've created a full schedule and I know for those uh, these variations here there's about three tons of additional steel may be required. Okay. So all of this is available at your fingertips. You can uh, take advantage of this within Proto Details um, uh, just to enhance the, the way in which you're, uh, you're detailing but also quantifying and maybe valuing uh, projects that you're involved with. Now once we've completed the concrete detailing, you may be asking, how about the steelwork? Well for the steelwork we use Protosteel. And I'm just going to launch Protosteel. And what we're doing with Protosteel here is we're communicating the entire steel model, structural model, across into uh, the Protosteel environment. Now this includes all the underlying uh, analytical uh, results. Uh, the analytical model is being communicated as well. Um, and once we get the model in here, you'll see that you've got um, exactly the same model that we created earlier. Across the left here, you'll see that there is a macro gallery. And this macro gallery contains a range of different standard connections which you typically use in practice. Maybe you've got beam-to-beam -beam end plate connections, fin plate joints, perhaps you've got an apex haunch, or maybe you've got um, some uh, beam to column joints with stiffen end plates or perhaps you've got fin plates there or even haunches. So um, there's a range of different connections here that you can assign to the model. Bracing connections, uh, splice connections, pearl and girt connections, uh, base plate arrangements here, um, uh, truss connections and the like. You can also uh, complement the model with other detailing here. Maybe you've got um, um, some uh, uh, other additional, other additional uh, connection details that you wanted to create. Um, there's also some ancillary steel work, maybe checker plate, railings, and other miscellaneous details, uh, just shear studs for composite action, that type of arrangement, so available in here. Now the idea with this is that once you've uh, uh, brought the model across, you can then uh, use Protosteel to start to make uh, connections within uh, the um, with it between the steel work. So um, I can come and choose a connection that I'd like to use. So maybe in this situation I might want to use a purling connection. I can choose two elements and if I right click you'll see that the purling connection has been assigned to this uh, joint. And you can do this across multiple elements here. So I could just run up this um, uh, this truss here and come and, um, and, and make some of those connections for, for me if I wish. Um, if you go into um, a particular macro so if I, if I look at this detail in more detail, you'll see that the connection um, actually has a range of different options here. Okay, if I wanted to um, maybe use a bracket cleat or perhaps I'd like to use a folded plate, there's different options in here which you can uh, consider. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, um, but you have the flexibility within each macro to be able to choose. Now, um, if I come uh, out, maybe I'd like to, at this point, uh, maybe connect my beam to uh, my column. So let's let's go for a stiffen end plate connection here. I can choose the two elements, and elements, and if I right click here, that connection is created. So underneath this, we are also creating design, and and you can click on this and create uh, detailed design reports. So you can see a uh, step by step checking here. At this point in time, uh, we are designing. Uh, to the Euro codes, we do have the intention of, in the future, uh, providing Indian code clause referencing here. But you can take advantage of the Indian code, uh, the Euro codes for designing all your connections in here, and you can see all the detailed checks in accordance with the codes of practice being performed. Now, <clears throat> now obviously, if I had to uh, carry on doing that uh, for the whole model, that could be quite time-consuming. So in Proto steel we've got some revolutionary new technologies now I'm not going to go into this in detail but I'm just going to show you quickly so we have IntelliConnect and you can choose to to run different connections here so say for example I want to design my GERT connections quickly I can just choose my preference for the GERTs hit run and it's going to go away and look at this model and it's going to assign all the GERT connections instantly to the model and you can see here that just with a few clicks we've actually come and designed and applied all the GERT connections across the model there. And I could carry on um, um, using this to design other connections in the model. I might want, to, might, might want to do is just look at this truss and I'm going to design the end base of the truss here. I'm just going to, um, <coughs> to ask it to assess these 
And if I go, you can see it's just run across and it's going to design the end connections here uh, to meet the um, <clears throat> between the truss and the columns, okay? So they've been designed, okay? If I look in detail at this, you can see that maybe um, they're not, it's not quite what I envisaged. I've got those bolts slightly protruding. Well, the beauty of Proto Steel is that these are macros. I can come in here and we can look at those macros in more detail. If I'd like to make tweaks and changes to this connection, I can. So if I wanted to maybe, uh, maybe push the plate down and extend it below, okay, maybe I'd like to um, um, change this around a little bit. So I can just make some uh, changes to this and you can see that th th this is adapted, okay, and I, maybe this is more in, in tune with what I'd like to have for that connection. Now, if I want to, um, at this point I actually want to start to uh, create some detailing. Proto Steel is, um, has, has tools to allow you to quickly set up and create details. So I can select these uh, items here and, um, and we have what's called a detail manager here. Now I can give uh, the connection a name, so I might call it Trust One. I can, um, I can add this and then I can choose objects that I might want to include in, in the steel detail that I want to create. So you can see here I've just created a little box around this. Okay, you can look at different uh, perspectives of this, so you can choose the various perspectives that you'd like to look at that connection uh, from. So maybe you want to see um, a connection uh, from the end there, uh, and you can set that up. You can also add different views, so if I wanted to see a 3D perspective, that can also be established here. Now the idea with ProtoSteel is once you uh, have a um, um, connections uh, that you wish to detail, you can create views of these. So if I come in here and uh, and I can choose to slice my model here, okay, and I can create maybe an elevation of that truss. You'll notice that the de the steelwork detail there we had is, is created with a, a box. And at this point, I'm just going to <clears throat> uh, come to my drawing manager. I'm just going to quickly show you some stuff here. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but I just um, um, what I would like to do is just come in and uh, create a drawing, okay, and we can give this a name. Let's just call this truss. Okay, and we can enter that, create that drawing here. And what I've what I've done just earlier is I created that view in the tree here. I can drag this view into my drawing sheet. So here we can see an elevation of that view. Um, and um, at the same time, if I just want to click on uh, the connection detailing, okay, um, in here. Um, that, that connection detail that we created is instantly created from the view. So you can see here uh, all the various um, referencing to um, uh, the sections that we established earlier. Okay, and you can actually see in detail uh, that, that connection detail uh, connection being drawn out here. Now you can um, annotate these further if you wish. So for example, if I if I wanted to. Um, Maybe also uh, in here annotate the bolts. Okay, I can I can do that. Okay, there's um, uh, various annotation tools here uh, to allow you to to do this. Um, if, and um, you can also uh, provide other types of annotation if I wish to uh, uh, draw up and create dimensions in here uh, to dimension out different parts of the connections. All of this I can do at my fingertips. So, uh, so very quickly, you can create drawings using Proto Details, uh, Proto Steel. You can uh, design and detail your connections out, and you can produce whatever level of steelwork detailing which you like. Now, once I've finished my steelwork, I'm, the final thing I may want to do is just compile everything into our design reports. And to do this, we have a report manager. Um, you can just load the report manager in here, and um, Proto Structure will is able to add all the different available design reports at this point into one single document. Now you can arrange and organise this uh, accordingly, um, and you can then ask it uh, to build the report out for you uh, and combine and create all the calculations into into one. Now you can add different reports progressively as you work through uh, the design of your model, but at the end of this it will create uh, one single document with everything tabularized, you can see it all in the table of contents here, all ready for you to review. So you can look at uh, different parts of the report, uh, look at um, the various um, reports that we are, are creating in here, uh, and you can, you can use the uh, 
the tree down the left to, to quickly go to of different parts uh, that you would like to look at in more detail uh, to review things here. Now these reports can be fully customised. You can put your own company logo and set them up exactly like your calculation sheet uh, would appear. And these can be then PDF'd or they can be sent to Word. You can of course um, add other information to the report. So if you have uh, a photographs or a design brief that you'd like to bring in, certainly you can do this. You can add this to the front of the report to complement uh, the design documentation. So all that will be presented in a very neat organised way uh, for you to uh, make your submissions uh, to local authorities for compliance. So I hope what I've shown you today has been exciting. It's great to be able to introduce the Indian codes to you. It's simply not possible within the short period of time we have to go through all the functionality within Protostructure. It's a very a powerful, comprehensive system. It's evolved over many years and it's very exciting now to introduce this to all of our users and engineers across India. So how do we deliver the Protostructure suite across India? Well we actually have three different versions available in the market. We have the Protostructure Enterprise suite. This is the full system encompassing Protostructure Enterprise, Proto Details, Proto Steel as well as Proto BIM for integration with other uh, BIM platforms. For those of you who are doing more concrete focused work we have the Protostructure Professional Suite this includes everything except for protosteel and it's really for those of you who are focusing on reinforced concrete building design. For those of you who may be looking at doing smaller developments, smaller projects up to about five stories in height, we also had the standard version. So amongst the offering there are, there'll be something that will suit your local requirements, your business requirements within, uh, within our uh, suite offering. Now what if I want to try Protostructure? Can I try it? Well yes you can. So please uh, make your way to our website uh, protosoftware.com and you'll see in the top right there's a try now button. Feel free to download um, and install the trial version. It runs for 30 days and then you can fully experience and understand the power behind Protostructure. Any questions you have please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to answer anything that you have as you're, as you're working through the trial. Now what about acquiring Protostructure? How can I get hold of the latest versions of Protostructure? Well we have some very special launch offers in India uh, in, in conjunction with the Indian code release and these are peculiar to Indian only users and they are available until the 30th of September 2023. So if you'd like to take advantage of those, they are very special pricing offers, please contact our distributors in India. Our distributors in India are authorised to provide you with uh, the software and you will find that our distributors in India are also, uh, um, all, each distributor will provide you with equivalent pricing uh, you will always get the best office through our distributors and they will be able to provide you with local support and local technical services. So how do I reach out to them and us? Well you can contact us directly and we can put you in touch with them. So you can reach us at asiasales at protosoftware.com or you can uh, visit our website and, and for the latest information you can always come to protosoftware.com and you'll get the latest details on our, our the technology as well as any offers that we have. But our authorised Indian distributors are here. I'll leave these up at the end of the webinar so you can take their details down if you want to reach out to them. And they are authorised to provide uh, uh, sales and technical support as well as training to all of our users across India. So please reach out to any of, the, any of these distributors. You'll be treated equitably by each of them. Uh, and we would love to have you as users. So on that note, I'd just like to thank you very much for today. It's been wonderful uh, having you for our Indian launch. It's a fantastic uh, time at Prota, and we're really excited to be able to deliver the technology across India and support you in, in many years to come. So thank you very much, and have a great day.